Good afternoon, February 13, 2014. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life. Today is the first day of the semester, so welcome. Let's get started. Welcome to this class. It's a little bit different from the other classes, because have you ever been to this class one before? I think so, in the university life course, right? Yeah, you. Have you been here? Yes. Okay, just could you waste your hand if you've been here before? Okay, I got some, but the majority of this class have not been here before. Well, anyway, welcome. This is called the RG07 Collaborative Classroom. So it's a little bit different from the traditional classroom in the sense you're not sitting in rows. And so teacher, I seldom stand here to talk. I will switch around the table discussing the truth more than I'm standing here talking to you. But let me remind you, this is the course CISG 114. The name is Web Technology and Life. It's a general education course for first year student freshman and also for second year student sophomore. You do not need any particular prerequisite to come to this course. The name is Web Technology and Life, so it's not just technology, it's not just about life, but the integrations of this too in your life. Okay? And we do not need any particular background in technology. Okay, let me switch on the air conditioning first. Alright? But we do need some basic skills, okay, literacy skills. For example, your basic ability to read in English, okay, to write in English, and to speak in English. Now I know that for those of you who are from Macau, if you're not from an English-speaking school, you're still getting used to that, it's okay. We have no prejudice against you, we're here to help you. Now, the only thing is, you have to understand, I am just a human, as a teacher. I do not have any magic. But the only way that I can help you to learn is to help you to learn among yourselves. So that's the reasons why I choose this classroom. We have this class in the semester. It's called Collaborative Classroom because everyone in this classroom is supposed to help every other person in the class. Okay? So in the semester, when you are here, you'll come to your table, okay, that belongs to your unit. Okay, normally you can see that in your unit, I would say it's not more than three persons per table. So normally in this semester, uh, you will have at least a learning partner, okay, depending on the number of students in class. If it's even, that's very good. If it's odd, that means somehow in your unit, you might have more than one partner, okay? So, let me get started by helping you understand what it's all about. You're free to bring your food, drinks in this classroom, okay? So uh, I can surprise some, just like what I do today. Uh, normally I will give you something to eat before I invite you to think about and do something. It's much more pleasing, all right? So unfortunately, because I could not a farm a parking space, so the drinks that I have could not be brought up here. I park my vehicle in the library and the drinks are so heavy I say, oh, save it for next week. All right? So, it's always just water, but it's water is very important, it's much more healthy than other things. So, I hope you will make this your home base to study. Um, there is no particular things that has to be staggering in this class. Uh, the mission of the general education course is to help you to learn, to learn with a particular set of skills under the pretext of a particular subject, and in this web technology. And in the process of doing this course in this semester, I highly recommend that if you have your own computing devices, particularly your smartphone or your iPad, or iPad mini, or your tablet, PC, and the notebook, bring them, okay, with you. Because when you bring them to you, uh, in this class, you can do things together. Okay, immediately, you do not need to wait until you go home and go to the computer room to do it. And if you don't have any of these devices, go to the ICTO desk in the learning company, check out one from the desk in there. But you have to check it out before 2.30 and you have to return it home by 4.15. It's pretty good, it's a 
you're going to end the class probably by 4.20. Okay? So this is the, the minimum expectations, and I hope you can do it. Okay? But those of you who register, who register for this course, you should have received an email from me, which is directly from this website, which is called the Real Model website for this course. And the email tells you something. Uh, every week, you should receive an email, probably on Sunday, telling you what I expect from you. And this week was the core theme. And then down to the bottom of the email, I will tell you what to do, not only during the week, uh, before class, during class, after class, and end of week activity. Wow, so much work to do! Now these are not uh, much work to do, you just take this some kind of guidelines to help you organize yourself in the context of the study of this course. It's not much work to do. Oh yes, uh, I enjoy my students very much. Uh, not only, uh, my students will understand what they need to do by the time they need to submit something. So let me tell you. Let me tell you something, okay? Now you have spent about 10 minutes reading the syllabus. Maybe I can help to do some kind of questions and answer exercise. Now let's say this is table 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7. I think that we have 8 tables, but now 7. Okay, it is 21. I assume we have got 24 students. Alright, but anyway. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now I have to try and ask some questions to see if you can discover it from the syllabus. How many pieces of homework you need to do in this semester in order to pass this course? Any table? Okay, three. Okay. Now let me give you the microphone. Alright. You have this. Okay. So uh, we have table two suggesting that we have three homeworks, alright? So any objections from the other table? Alright? Any objections? So three homework. So three assignments, alright? So on which page of the syllabus can you tell me something about this in a much more specific manner? Say table one. Page five, right? So in page five, you see, we say there are three assignments. So could you name the three assignments to me? Name them. What's the name of the three assignments? Can you tell? What's the name of the three assignments? Or what are the names of the three assignments? Can you tell? Where did you find it? Which page? Say table five. Any suggestion from table five? All right, can I have the microphone? Gentlemen, can you find something? Uh, can you read uh, something where? Maybe on the second page. On the second page, right? You have the uh, individual assignments. Individual assignments. Pair assignments. And Pair assignments and team assignments. Oh, that's a wonderful discovery. All right. So thank you for the contributions from table five. So any objections? How many pieces of assignments do you need to do in the semester? Now someone suggests take page five, right? So can you discover more from page five besides on table one, page two, which said individual assignment, peer assignments, and team assignments? It's a treasure. It's a treasure hunt. We're doing treasure hunt now. Mm -hmm. What can you find in the servants? All right. So first of all, any objections to three major assignments in the semesters? No. Okay. So any support on which three? And then I got some suggestion from table five. Uh, Individual, pair, and team. Any differences? Any different interpretations? I give you some time to look at it. The syllabus is very important because you need to look it through to understand what is expected of you. Okay, that's very good. 
So let's say we have three major assignments. Now, this is what we call the Moodle environment. How would you have actually used this environment? How many of you have actually used this environment in other courses of your study here? How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, all right? So we got six. So the other students, it's okay, don't worry. If you have not used it before, now is a good time for you to learn. Because part of the course is to help you to pick up the technology of web instead of just studying about it. So web technology live requires of you the use of web technology in your living to experience it. And the modern environment is an example of a web technology to help us to learn, to manage our learning, and to help teachers to facilitate our teaching, or better say, facilitate your learning. So basic curves is a web page which will help you to do studies in this course by giving you constant reminders and guidelines on what to do. So um, the way to get in this Moodle environment is very simple. Have, have you ever used Firefox or browser? Okay, that's good. Let's go to the Firefox, have a new tab. Okay, so we have a new tab. So we need to enter a web address, okay? And the web address is very simple. We have web course, W-E-B-C-O-U-R-S-E dot U-M-A-C dot M-O. So you enter this web address, we hit enter. You will be brought to this page. And then we are using web 2.5 versions of the URL model, not the 1.9, which is the legacy versions. So you create the URL model 2.5 and you will brought into a page which is called a login page. Now I have already logged in, so they will ask me, do you want to log out before you log in? If you have not logged in yet, you will be presented by a page. Let's say I'm going to log out now. So Suppose I have not logged in. So this is the page that you need to type in, the username, which is your email address. Anything before the add sign, okay? Or your student number, all right? Which is normally your student number. You type in anything before the add sign, your student number, and then your password to access your email account at the university account. So for me, and that is my username, okay? And then I have my password, which unfortunately I cannot tell you. All right, so then I will be getting into a list of courses, which I can handle. And in this particular case, it's the web technology of my course, okay? So you see that I have two pages here. One is for the teacher's message, the other is for that. So once you got into this web page, which is called a course support environment, Okay, so you will be given the basic information of the course code, the course name, and then who's managing this site. And uh, I have my learning center syllabus. You can download here when you click on this. You can see the learning center syllabus, which is exactly the paper copy there in your desk. Okay, you can read it. And then I will also have some basic information from our vice factors and other which is good for you to read. And then in this course, we have a theme songs in Chinese that means you need to walk your room on your own, all right? I cannot guide you all the way, but I can help you, but you have to walk on your own. And then we have the GE program handbook, which is also on the table. You can see that each one of you should have a GE handbook which tells you something about the general education program. And then we have the academic calendar for this semester and also the last semester. You can read this academic calendar. You can see which days are holidays. And then we have, according to the university regulations, have to make you aware of the basic rules of handling student academic dishonesty in this course and actually in any other courses. It is expected our students would not copy from other students when they submit the work. That means plagiarism is strictly for forbidden, all right? So you need to read some rules there. And if you happen to be a physically disabled student, you need to use a wheelchair or crutches. We do have some disability support services offered on campus. 
and then you can read something on this. For those of you who need help in language, for example, you can read Chinese, you cannot read English. You can use this free English Chinese dictionary here. For those of you who want something more on English interpretation of something, you can use this English dictionary, which gives you English interpretations. And for those of you who need help to learn English quickly, so that you can pick up what's needed, you can go to this website, it's free of charge, okay? So these are basic tools for you to use. And we have a class roster, okay? So far, I copied from the um, student web, so we have about 24 students, okay? I, I'm sure it's going to be fluctuating for two weeks, because normally students will be completed only after two weeks' time. And then we have uh, the attendance record. In a minute, I will take attendance. Uh, and then we have the class announcements and news, which is where I send my teacher's message. So the teacher's message in the past Sunday, or let say Monday, was written here. And then we do have um, a forum for you to share your ideas on any topic you believe it's important. You can come here and you can click this link and if you have any idea you want to share, just click on this, type in the title and then type something and the whole class will read it. All right, so this is something how you can keep the whole class in touch about any idea you have, all right? But take for when I would like to collect ideas with you on how we're going to give you something to do, what you can do about this, and this is where you need to come back to share with us, all right? So, and then we have uh, Dr. Bat's kidney post hotline at Dr. Bat. So this is a hotline which is given to each one of you individually. Okay, when you use the hotline, no one in this class can see your message except me. It's just like your email, but it's much more convenient for me when I set up a hotline here. So whenever you have something important and you can come to class because you're safe, you just come here to type in your hotline, just like what you type in in this discussion forum. All right? Make sure you understand that each one of you it's your primary channel to talk with me, okay, individually. So you can use this hotline kidney post. That's why I say kidney post. Anything that's happened to you, you don't need to tell anybody to tell me about this, all right? So this is the basic housekeeping block in the Voodoo environment. And this is week number one, okay? And if you come to this Voodoo environment, you can see that I have all the 14 weeks information put over there already, okay? I will not wait until everybody to give you something. I put all what we're going to do, what you're going to learn there, so you can actually go home tonight and go through them, all right? So this is week number one. We start from February 12 to February 15. And this is day number one, and the theme of this particular week is called Coming to Terms with Web 2.0 in our daily living, okay? So when you come to this week, normally we have two days because in which we have two content of um, sessions, but in this week we just have one. Today is first day, and so you can see day one for this. And before that, I've given you core support. Oh, it's an extra stuff. Um, actually, I can use the Moodle environment to do all of these, but unfortunately, the new versions of the Moodle environment is not generic enough. And so if I teach more than one section, this is section one, if I teach section two, I will really have to duplicate all the things in every Moodle environment, which I don't want to do it. So I actually use some other website to carry the core information of this course. And I use the sections to link them. So you can see that I have a course of what online. Now, all the important information about this course, um, the majority of this, you can read it from your service, but you are obliged to come back here to read something like the calendar of this semester, the syllabus, which is the one you're reading, the reading assignment is very important. Submissions, your three major assignment. Assessment, how am I going to give you a grade? And actually, this is how you are going to give your own grade. You will find out that. And the learning design of this course, the learning practice style. 
And the learning design is to enable you to learn to learn, but many of my students in the past have already indicated to me that there's so much use to the secondary school or traditional teaching, which is teacher center and government, they have not really taught to learn. <laughs> it's like learn to learn. So I have to put learn and practice here and just to make sure you're not comfortable enough with the way we're going through this course. I have enough support over there to help you, all right? And then branded learning is very important. Today, we're going to keep a little bit on branded learning, which means design of face-to-face -face contact two times a week in this classroom. You have this environment to help you to learn all the 14 weeks materials are already there. Now, how are you going to learn it? You can just go to the environment to read, to write, to watch, to hear, to listen to the video. You see the video is over there. And then you can have all the best things, okay, which can help you learn better. And then you have online activities, for example, uh, you need to write me an email, you need to use the Kitty Post channel. This is part of online activity. But one of the major things, which is very important to student to do in the academic uh, contact is you need to learn how to write, to make notes, to organize your learning material, to discuss with your fellow students online, face to face, and to write a blog about what you learn. And then when something bigger comes, like the assignment or team assignment, you have a report to write. So online activity mainly helps you to get used to doing all of these things online using the Moodle environment. Okay? And then a very important time management. A lot of my students' work have indicated to me that they need help to learn how to time manage themselves. Sometimes, uh, if I took 10 days' time to do a piece of homework, many of the students will spend the first eight days not doing it, and they were going to do it on the very last two days for some reasons which you don't understand that I was a student before, so I'm going to help you understand it better. The assessment rubric is very important. We, whatever we do, we have a criteria that you are well informed before you submit the work. So you can use the rubric to give yourself a grade first. We, uh, as a teacher, I will, I will refrain from giving you a grade until you're sure what grade you want to get. Okay? For example, in the past, in a, in a traditional classroom, teacher would just say, this is a homework, and when you have to submit it, at the end of that, I'm going to give you back and give you a grade. But in this class, it's a little different. I will refrain giving you a grade and, until I give you enough chance to look over it based on the criteria and I'll keep asking you what grade you want to get. That means if you want to get an A, you need to do up to this level. If you want to get a B, you need to do up to this level. Have you done that? Okay. You cannot say, let me give you a piece of homework which is equivalent to the grade D, but you need to give me an A. Well, I'm sorry because your work is going to be made public in this class and all your fellow students will be able to read it. So, as a teacher, a fair game is you better make it work your own mind. All right? So it's a little bit interesting as an assessment rubrics. And then we have classroom participations. I hope this is very important. A lot of my students got surprised last semester when I said, of course, tell me what you did throughout the semester. I give you two points per um, major classroom participations activity. And a lot of students got 10, 15 points, or 100 semester points because of that. All right? So let me tell you the secret. Uh, classroom participations. Normally, we have 1.5 hours each class. And I'm normally dividing each class into three sections. Section 1, 30 minutes. Section 2, 30 minutes. And section 3, 30 minutes. Okay? As a teacher, I will start talking in the first sections for not more than 15 minutes. I give you mini lecture, but most of the thing I like to talk about it, you can see it on the web already. Alright? So when you come back here, it is your so time. Every class in the second 30 minutes is your time to tell your story of what you learn in class by picking up the microphone 
and tearing the whole class just like what I do, all right? But each person will be given only five minutes at most, all right? So every time you do something like this, you need to keep a good record of it in your journal or in your learning records there. And normally, if you look at the syllabus, all right, look at the assessment part, there is something called what? On page number two, there is something called in-class participation, right? 20%, all right, out of 100%. That means if you present something to the whole class and you invite your fellow students to discuss with you, which is discussions, okay? And then you help them to understand that much more about this something, you got your activity accomplished. And each such activity, which is called one incidence of a class participation, will be given a certain score at the end of the semester. In the last semester, it's two points per such activity. So we have, if you have 10 such activities throughout the semester, you've got 20 points already, no negotiations, all right? But this semester, there is something that you need to watch for. Besides participations, you must make it a quality participation. That means look at the criteria, what is required of you, all right? And you can do it in every class throughout the semester studying of the next class in the week, in next week, all right? So what can you share? You will ask me a question. I invite you to read the servants, I invite you to do some before class activity right here. Oh, well, this is what we're doing now. And after the class, there's something I expect you to do. At the end of the week, I expect something that you have, you should have done. Well, you can just take those things and come to share with us, all right? And when you do the sharing, it's recorded, okay? And it's, uh, you can keep a good record of this with the video, with your materials, and put it in the environment. That is the evidence of your learning. You can use it to earn your score. So classroom participation is very important. That is your soul time, that is a sharing time, in every second session of every class, studying on next week. All right, so get to celebrating. All right, so whatever you share, make it a quality sharing experience so that people in this class will learn from what you did and will give you good credit for it. All right, so 20% is not a small amount of, of scores. Okay, so and when you look at the assessments there, there is another score called Learn to Learn Activity Score, which is based on your reading assignment and your online activities. Okay, you look at here, there is a reading list. Okay, there's a reading list throughout the 14 weeks. Let's go to the reading list. All right, so you're brought into this support environment. And in this point environment, you have a reading list each week. And you also have a video of this each week, of course. And for each week, all right, so, which is very much consistent with the topics produced here, you can, you have to do is, you don't need to read all the materials there, because it's designed to have a lot of chances, a lot of choices too. But in the first week's reading, which you're supposed to do this week, Basically, we have two questions. What is web technology and its impact in life? The second question is, what is information privacy? Okay, so in other words, the focus of this week is you need to have some basic understanding of these two questions. But since under each question there's so much material, how many items there? More than 10, okay, up to 10. You do not need to read all of them, but at least your job is in pick one. Study that one that you pick. Take some notes, ask some questions, and then get ready for discussions. If you have done something more, which you think, oh, I think I know something about this, 
I, I, I read two articles there, I think of some very good notes. Maybe I can put this in the context of PowerPoint. So I produce a PowerPoint which is not, not more than five slides. Okay? And you come here and say, I have something to share. I want to use it as my first week's learning experience. Well, you just need to sign up. One week before that. How do you sign up? Remember, in our weekly Moodle blog, we do have something called a, a, a forum here, okay? Right here, look at this. We have something called a topic, online discussion forum. You can use this topic online discussion forum to write a sign up message. Very simple. Dean class, I want to do a presentation next week on which day because normally you have two days on each week, which is not more than five minutes on the following topic. I want to sign up now. Okay? Normally, if we have more than, uh, you see, 30 minutes, only have five slots of five minutes. Uh, uh, six slots of five minutes. Six times five, even 30. So we can at most accommodate per class six students, okay? If we actually get more than six students sign up here, we'll do it first come, first serve. Okay? So you understand the meaning of that. That's called classroom participation. This is a form of active learning. So you know that what is expected of you that way to learn something about others. You do not need to do all those things. I do not recommend you to grab yourself, but I, I want you to learn how to pick up information and think about something. Okay, in five minutes time, you're going to come here, present your PowerPoint and tell the stories of that. And uh, it's your class participation. You can use it as the basis to learn some school. All right? So, but remember, as I said, one is enough. One from this, one from this is enough. This is expected. I would not check you until there is a submission time, all right? Okay, do you remember we have three major assignments in this semester, right? So we have not clarified what are the three major assignments are, but if you would page number five, okay? Down there in the examination, we do not have final examination in this course, okay? Did you see that? But instead, as I said, the reasons why we do not need to find examinations is because we would like to encourage formative assessment. That means we have three major assignments. We have one learning portfolio. Okay, I'll tell you something about the learning portfolio next week. But the three major assignments, it's called learning contract. Each assignment by itself is called learning contract. What is meant by a learning contract? Learning contract is the term we use not for kids to learn. It's a term we use for adults to learn. You're now adult, you're not kids. So adult, when they do something, they know there is a binding contract. It's a commitment expressed through what you want to do. So in this course, if you look at the work you need to do, okay, Let's go back to submission, okay? You have three major assignments. They are named under learning contract number one. Second is called learning contract number two. Third is called learning contract number three. Now, learning contract number one is due in week number four on March the 8th. Okay, so today is February the 13th. So March the 8th is the week, or better say the day, when you have to turn in your learning contract number one. Now what is entailed in learning contract number one, I'm going to tell you in a minute. And then for learning contract number two is due on March the 29th, okay, all right? So you can always go back to this to read it, um, but if you want to put it down on your service, it's fine. And then in contract number three is due on April the 19th, all right? And after that, 
On May the 17th, you need to submit your learning portfolio, which is equivalent to your learning, your final exam, okay? But what is meant by portfolio? Portfolio means it's a cabinet where you use to store what you have done in the past free learning contract, okay? So we always make sure that you will not forget what you did throughout the semester. A portfolio is very important. Normally, learning contract number one include individual work and pair work, okay? You need to have a learning partner. Learning contract number two will include individual work, pair work, and some teamwork, okay? And learning contract number three, absolutely individual work, pair work, and teamwork. Now, in order to get the contracts done, you cannot do it alone. You must look for a learning partner in this work, in this class, okay? This learning partner is an important person you have to work with throughout the semester, okay? He or she is going to help you carry on the online or face-to-face -face discussions of your work, feedback to you what you have done, if you want to get an A, but you're going to submit things like this, I don't think you get an A. Or, oh, if you want to get a B, but you work with an A, you can more than get it, or something like this. So, three assignments, learning contract one, learning contract two, learning contract three. Now, the artifacts of learning contract number one, artifacts of learning contract two, and artifacts of learning contract three are very much similar. Let me just give you a basic impressions of what you need to do. Well, we have 14 weeks in this semester, and this is actually considered as an extra week, 15 altogether. Now, as I told you, there is a reading list on each week, okay? And your job is to make sure you go through the reading list, look up the number of questions there, and for each question, you need to select at least one reading item from the given. Okay? And your job is, you select one from each question, and you study that one, you take notes of it, you try to make a better understanding of what's the meaning of it. Okay? And that's your basic assignment. And then, so, as we go through the learning process, we consider that as the starting point. You select what you want to study under a specific essential question, and you start picking up knowledge from that, but it requires you to make notes, okay, of what you have selected. And then after you make the notes, you need to write a very simple journal of the notes. Okay, what is meant by a journal? A record of your learning based on the discovery you did. Maybe it's a number of facts, a number of questions, and an interesting uh, stories in mind, okay? And then you take your journal, okay? And you, you tell your journal story to your learning partner, okay? And your learning partner is going to listen to your story, and then your learning partner's major obligation is to give you feedback. The feedback could be done in a conversational manner, but each learning partner is obliged to give feedback to your partner in written form. It will be recorded in the discussion forum because that will be counted as your learn to learn score or nine activities. And then, once you have the feedback of your partner, your obligation is to organize the work with the feedback of your partner to produce a block of your discovery. So you go from writing something from a very raw data to the intermediate product after discussion to something which is almost acceptable for publications so that you can share with the whole world in this class. So we say you go from a journal to a discussion forum to your blog. You don't just write a blog. You must go through the discussion process. And that is called discussion forum, which is done by both you and your learning partner. All right? 
So you have to do this in such a way, hopefully, by the end of your first learning contract, you feel comfortable enough that I will pick up the topic at the beginning of the week, I will use one or two days to finish writing my journal, and I will use one or two days to discuss it with my learning partner, and by the end of the week, I will have my block out based on what we did together. Okay? And then you, when your partner is going to help you with that, you have to do the same for your learning partner too, because the topic you pay must be different from the topic your learning partner pay. Okay? We have so many choices. If it's the same topic, that means it's confusing. All right? So that is something that you need to learn how to use the basic literacy skill to pick it up. And since we have to do it online, in the process of doing that, you're using a lot of web technology. Later on, I'm going to show you how you can keep a video record for your conversations, for example, using the YouTube tools, and then or a voice record using the Firaku tools in the web, because it's part of web technologies. And if you have something a little bit interesting, you can use my app, which is online. So you can all that to show it to people. All right, so there's a lot of very interesting things to do, but basically, it's a journal, it's a discussion forum, it's a blog. Okay, when you come to the uh, official report, which is other than the blog, you have to put it down in Microsoft Word format, together with your learning partner, combining the topic that you've done and the topic your learning partner have done, and that is a very neat and tiny format, all right? Now, I would say it's not a lot of work, but it's a very good exercise for you to reuse the skills you've developed in your courses, and then at the same time, create a framework for yourself to absorb knowledge on your own. All right, I don't have much time left now. I have spoken more than 15 minutes today because it's the first day of class. All right. Let's get started with something interesting. Now, you have on each table some pieces of A4 paper, all right? And then I have given you a large piece of A3 paper, and also I've given on each table three pencils, and then some post-it notes. Now I want to do very simple exercise, which is I will invite you to watch some video, okay? So let's say, um, come back here. So let's say I come to during class. So when you come to during class work, let's try watching something. But I do not want you to just watch. I want you to get yourself ready. When you have your piece of A4 paper here, now, because I do not want you to waste a lot of paper, not only I invite my students to throw that piece of A4 paper like this, all right? So you turn this into one half, and then you turn this again into another one half. So your A4 piece of paper is now turned into one piece of A5 paper. Okay, this is called A5 size. So, when you look at this piece of paper, instead of two sides of an A4 paper, you have four pieces on one side, and another four pieces on the other side. You have eight pieces of A5. Now, I want you to be very frugal when you use your piece of paper to take notes. Now, you can take this home today, and you can bring it back to mock up next week to continue to use that piece of paper. Although I can supply you with a piece of paper. And I would like you to do something like this. Write down the day on this on one side, all right? And then write down the video we are going to watch, okay? We're going to watch a very simple video today, which lasts from a couple of minutes, called What is Active Learning, okay? So when you watch the video, I want you to pay attention definitely to what is said in the video. And at the end of the video, I'm going to ask you some very specific questions. And you try to take down something important from the video based on your impressions. 
So you should have a one piece of A5 paper, today's day and the video's name, which is called what is active learning, all right? And then each one of you need to take notes. Okay, not during the video, most likely after the video, I'll give you one, two minutes of time to do that. So get yourself ready. We have a lot of work to demonstrate to you. Okay, let's go. I think I need to make sure the sound is okay. Sometimes I know that there's something wrong with the sound. Let me go back here first. You see, I lost the sound here. So let's go from the very beginning to the top. Here we go. What is active learning? First, active learning involves teaching techniques that are something other than straight lecture. Second, active learning is not an entire project or assignment, but a much smaller task you give your students. However, a project or assignment can have several active learning pieces within it. Third, in order to consider something active learning, students must be doing something including discovering, processing, and applying information, not just listening to a lecture or reading a PowerPoint. Active learning can take many different forms, and instructors often use different strategies in face-to-face -face and online classes due to their different approaches to teaching and learning. For example, in a classroom, the instructor might ask each student to turn to their neighbor and discuss a particular topic. In an online course, the same exercise can be accomplished using a discussion thread, document sharing, or instant messaging. The idea is the same, but the approach is different. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face class example, simply having students turn to their neighbor and discuss a topic is active learning. In the online course, having two students discuss the same topic via a discussion thread is active learning as well. Research shows that students learn more when they're engaged in active learning. It's important to remember that lecture does have its place in both face-to-face -face and online environments. However, during active learning, students are involved in much more than just reading or listening, and more emphasis is placed on higher-order thinking skills, such as analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Further research has shown that students retain 70% of what they say and write, and they retain 90% of what they do. Compare this with the fact that students retain only 10% of what they read and 20% of what they hear, and you'll start to understand why active learning is so important. Now that we have an understanding of what active learning is and why we should implement it, let's look at some specific examples to give you a clearer picture of what constitutes active learning in practice. Let's take the example of a small group discussion. In a face-to-face -face setting, you might group students up and ask them to discuss a particular topic. While this alone is active learning, you can add to the exercise by asking each group to present their findings to the class in the form of a standard presentation, a radio or TV commercial, or a comedy skit. Now let's look at a small group discussion in an online course. You can group students into separate discussion threads and have them discuss a particular topic. Again, this alone can be considered active learning, but you can add to the exercise by having students present their findings using various Web 2.0 tools, such as recording a presentation with a PowerPoint or a Prezi, submitting a voice thread with audio and a series of images that relate to the topic, or present their topic in story format using Google Maps. As you can see, the possibilities are virtually limitless, so be creative. Both our face-to-face -face and online active learning examples cover the higher-order thinking skills of analysis and synthesis, but what about evaluation? In this example, it would be quite easy to hold a peer review of each presentation. In a face-to-face -face class, you can simply have students give their opinions on how appropriate each group's observations were and how well they presented the information. 
This should spur more conversation with the guidance of the instructor. In an online course, peer reviews can be held using a simple discussion thread or a voice thread. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face and online class examples, the small group discussion is active learning, as is the preparation for the presentation, the presentation itself, and the peer review of the presentation. Each step in the process is itself a distinct active learning strategy. Since students retain more information during active learning, simply stated, active learning equals better learning. So here we go. You have heard and watched this video presented by Long West Iowa Community College on what is active learning. All right? Now I would like each one of you to spend at most two minutes. Now, you just got some notes on the first page, A5. You may turn to a blank A5 page now to put down two questions about this video, okay, on your own. What will be the two important questions you want to ask after watching this very soft video on what is active learning? Okay, think on your own. Two minutes at most. We need time. If not two questions, one would be good enough. We're down to the last 30 seconds. Okay, so can I invite some table? Okay, actually, um, I should not say that at the very beginning. Now, each table, spend two more minutes discussing among yourself. Look at one another's questions and see uh, if you understand what others think. Okay, could you help share the questions with your table members? Okay. Just take a look at some of the other questions. All right, just glance through them. Yes, the ladies, can you share that with the gentlemen there? <laughs> yes, yes, share, share. Wow. Very simple questions. Yes, do you have any questions you can share? Share, yes. Okay, and I would like you to select one question out of the three on your table, or out of the six, if you have done two questions. And then select one after looking at them. Okay? Of course, the prospects might be a little bit sensitive or elaborate, but try to pick one question, all right, from your table, which you believe is important. Yes. Talk to your members. It's time for you to talk. Don't be shy. Help yourself, all right? It's very important to try.
I'll give you two to three minutes time. I promise I'm not going to talk that much longer next week, so you have more time interacting with one another. Yes? Uh, actually, at least one will be good enough. One from you, one from the other, and then you select one, which you think is very good for you to share. Okay? Luckily, I will give a lot of time to each table so that in each class, we will use your time, not my time. I'm sorry, I'm taking up a lot of your time today. You have any questions, share your talk, talk. Yes. Uh, I think it's very important you talk about yourselves. I will let you go five minutes before four o'clock today. So we have about 15 to 20 minutes to go, actually. 15, 15 on 20, 15 minutes to go. Can I, where is the other microphone over there, right? I'm going to give it to me, you're going to the first table talk to share with us the questions. All right, so. Two more minutes, just share among yourselves. I will definitely give you question time to ask questions on that. Let's say, could you help tell us your question? Yes. See if uh, you want to tell or if you want a gentleman to tell. Okay. So what's your question after your discussion? Well, the good one was, uh, what can we do if not all group members participate in group discussion? Okay, can you make it simple? What can you do without participating in group discussions? Yeah. Basically, we will be a kind of referee. Okay. So you will just let people have a chat. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, All right. but after group doesn't want to participate. Nice. So, what can you gain from it? Or uh, anything you want? Basically, the idea is to do this kind of uh, active learning. You yeah. need to have all the group members uh, yeah. actively participate. Active service. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But if like half the groups they're passively, then yeah, yeah. So we need to accommodate others. Just give them some time to feel comfortable enough sometimes like this. Yes, I, I think you did a very good job here. Do you have any, anything else to add? No? Okay, we we'll take time then. So do you have anything to share with us about your questions? Yes, take the microphone, you know very much about it. Yes, yes. Uh, our question is how to have a more active learning in our daily life. Okay, how to have more active learning in our daily life? Because uh, uh, we see that um, normally we think that active learning is just in school or in okay. university. Okay. So I think we can, uh, this is the question that we want to do. Oh, that's good. How to apply it to your daily living. Do you serve the web? <laughs> no? Do you use intellect? Oh, you don't like to use intellect. Okay. So, do you have anything to add? We're going to find a more. So, anything to add? Okay. So, let's see. If, are you willing to share with us a little bit more about your uh, your discussions? Uh, say questions. Uh, our question is why active learning equals to better learning. Oh, that's interesting. Why active learning equals better learning? Any. Any discussions results about yourself? Do you believe that it's okay? Good? And actually, by myself, yeah. so um, people people have and have to choose best for each hour. Okay. So I think actually, I mean, to better learning. 
So you 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 it's, yeah. it's in one sense it's a little better than right? Yes, I agree. Okay. okay. So do you have any ideas about it? Or do you agree or do you not agree? Yes. Actually, this question is my question. Okay. So <laughs> what's the positions? Uh, your 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 positions. I mean, do you do you believe it's true or it's not true or it's maybe true? <laughs> Maybe true. Maybe true. Okay, let's try to see if we can get something more. So, can you share with us something about your questions? Do you have any questions? Okay. Yes. I see, I see that active learning is good for students take part in the teaching, teaching process. Okay. okay. I, I see if the students talk too much in the, in yeah. the, in the classroom. Okay. And, uh, and all we do in school is learning is oh, okay. and the yeah. teacher yes. won't be yeah. teaching the teaching the knowledge yeah. okay. to okay. separate. Okay, that's I see. Yes. It can cause many, many troubles. Okay, it can cause many troubles. But, but I see that yes. I think that is a um, maybe is a good change to the life. Okay. The teaching. Okay. Okay. I think it's very interesting from what you shared just minutes ago. I discovered that. Are you from uh, Macau? No, Mainland China. China. In China. In, I, I understand that in, inside mainland China, teacher has a position called the sage and stage because they are the transmitter of knowledge. So the knowledge from their brain into different students. So we should not cut off the time that teachers transmitting knowledge to students, right? So that is something that is very interesting. But in, in, the, in, the, um, in, in for example, in Europe or in, in America or something, we believe knowledge is there is no monopoly of knowledge. That means teachers not only source of knowledge, knowledge is everywhere. So the, the idea is how we can learn to learn rather than being taught to learn. So this is a very we need to find a balance. Definitely, if you do not know the knowledge at all, the teachers will give you some basics and then for you to pursue on, on this. So it's a very interesting exploratory journey. So let's try to see what we can do about it. Do you have any, do you have any additions to your friends' discussions? Yeah. Any idea you want to add? Um, no, this is his afternoon. Yeah, your positions, um, right? Yes. yes. Could I know what's your major? What's your major? Communication. Oh, communication. Oh, your communications. communications. That's much better to talk about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. OK, do you have any things to share with us? In this table, yes. Uh, our question is, what makes active learning better than other kind of learning? Oh, that's good. What makes active learning better learning than other kinds of learning? Right. Yeah. That's very good. So, what do you think? For me, for me, I mean, I think that active learning. If I active learning, I find the information resources myself. So, okay. I will cherish more. So. All right. So we, uh, I put a lot of effort on finding those information, uh, but so I will work hard on studying. So okay, that means it's something you do it all on your own. If yet, exactly. Then okay. That's why it's good. Okay, that's good. So do you have any ideas to add? What do you think? What well, is the red point of the active learning? What is the weak point? Weak, point. weak right? That, not, that is not so good things. About yes, yes, yes. I think uh, the, the lady over there just mentioned something. If students speak too much, say, like act learning means students will not think in class, taking out time from the teacher, when normally the students are expecting knowledge directly from the teacher, that is no good. Because sometimes I do not want to listen to him or her, I want to listen to the teacher. Do you see that that is one suggestion? So what, what do you think? Hey, I think that uh, active learning is quite good because it can inspire the uh, students to think more and to think critically. Okay. And they will not restrain from the teachers thought and they can have their own ways to think about things and then they can have their point to 
Okay. And that means with the practice of active learning, students will have more chances of being inspired. And they will have more chances to think critically and do things on their own. And because of that, they will love or keep the knowledge longer than what it's supposed to be. Something like this. Right? I think that's a very interesting point. So what do you think? What do you think? Active learning. What's the question first? My question is um, um, how to do well. How to do well, okay. In active learning. Yeah. So uh, in a sense of high grade? Knowledge. Yes. Okay, that's, that's reasonable. But how? Did you suggest something? How? Let's pick up the microphone. Um, so you can share with us your question first. Um, I'd say, uh, okay, my question first. Uh, the other two groups already mentioned the question I wanted to ask, uh, which is to do with the drawbacks. Okay. Um, Okay, the other question I had was like, uh, if, like the video says, uh, active learning equals better, better learning. So, I mean, if it really equals better learning, how come it's not really practiced? Uh, I mean, you go to other classes, you, are, you find yourself in a lecture room with yeah. thousands of students. Yeah. So my question is, why is it not practiced? It's a very good question. So, uh, I can tell you the secret. The, the idea is economy, economy and efficiency. Well, but today, because of e-learning, neither well, that which I have everything already done here, I do not need to repeat a lot, because it, as long as I show you the path, and if you are willing to do it with your time, you can actually repeat a lot of the transmissions that the teacher used to do in class. But if you do not have that, Aha, uh -huh. then it's an interesting catch. Okay, so uh, there is still a lot of room for discussion. Yeah, so thank you very much. Excellent question. And you, you point out, all of you point out something very good. Now, what about you? <laughs> so, do you have any ideas? My question is how does the active learning affect the students? Oh, that's good. How does active learning affect students? The gentleman here is given one answer, inspiration. More time to think on their own. More ownership of the knowledge rather than the teachers. Okay? So, any other? Yes, do you have anything to add? It's okay, don't worry, it's all time. I think uh, passive learning is more important than active learning because our, what we yeah. know is um, uh, we need to know the knowledge first yes. uh, by myself or search or search you know internet. Yes. Then we need to prepare ourselves uh, before go to group discussion or active learning. So, uh, maybe say it, you, your first statement: passive learning is more important than active learning because of the following reasons, or did I have that something wrong? Uh, is this person, passive learning is learning by myself or? No, passive learning means we just learn by listening. Oh. Active means we have to do it on our own. Just want to just make something. <laughs> it's okay. So, so listen to your interpretation, that's why I need to ask you this question. It's okay, perfect. Don't worry about it. There's no right or wrong. We want to make sure that in a class like this, we're all learning from one another. Okay? There is no discrimination of right or wrong. Now, but I, as a teacher, I must tell you that um, in every subsequent class, okay, besides your sharing time in the second half hour, in the first 20 minutes, I would like you to do some kind of discussions like this. Now, the key to making a successful learning experience in classes, each one of you need to do something as well as suggested here, okay? Eat, tweet, you have before class, look over what you're supposed to do during class, after class, and end of week activity. 
Now, this is the very first class. Let me walk you through this. For example, in this week, I expect you to do something here when you, before you come here when I send out the message. I would expect you to do some study on the general education program information from the university of Macau. You just need to click the link. You can be brought to that page. And you need to understand the reasons behind why we have general education by looking into this link, the reform for undergraduate studies. And then we have a general education program sign from the Center for Teaching and Learning Enhancement. There you can have a lot of information. And I'll replicate the message of why it's important. And we have the handbook here, which you got right there. And then uh, the learning center syllabus for this course is very important, OK? You have a paper copy here. And then you also have the electronic copy there. You need to read it before you come back to class next week, OK? And this is the first day of class. I have a questionnaire prepared for you. And this questionnaire is installed in our Moodle environment. So when you go back to the Moodle environment here, you can either click on this link, or you can click on this link. You need to complete this questionnaire before the end of this Saturday, OK? So that we have some information about you, so that I can have better understanding of how I adjust my class time, OK? And then, at the end of that, when we come to during class, uh, what actually we should have done, but sometimes we couldn't have done all, is we're going to watch some video, okay? So I would highly recommend that you watch those video at home, okay, at a convenience time. And here is something by like discussions. I've just given you something on defining active learning, but I have not come back here to introduce what is meant by self-revelations and then some things that I recommend that you need to do uh, the first day of class. When you open up your paper-based syllabus at the very end, okay, but this is not in the, um, you see that there's a page here, okay? So put some thoughts into those questions there, all right? And try to complete it before you come back next week. This is the during class. And then after the class, as I said, we have two questions for this week. Go home, select one item under each question, study that, okay, take some notes, all right? And then you can use the journal that I prepared for you online, which is the journal on the Moodle environment here. You just need to start it by clicking on this link, and then you can type up the name of the journals here, and the journal right here, and I can read it, okay? It could be your notes, it could be your question, or some sharing about our discussions today. So that will be very interesting. So um, during class, this is called the before class, during class, and then we have the after class activity, which I just mentioned, okay? So read a little bit about that. And if you need some help on how to do a good journal, you click on the generic efforts here, okay? I give you some hints here already. Basically, whatever you do, whatever we learn, we learn it through an OIA process in the college year. O means we observe, and then I means we interpret. A means what we should learn from this, okay, applications. The OIA process is the basic generic process to take notes. The ask question of what we should learn about it and how to give yourself a good answer. Okay, of course, there are a lot of things we need to do in between. And then um, it will be the, the last one is the end of week activity. Okay, the end of week activity is basically on refracting. Refracting on what you did, review and you share on your online discussion forum. All right, so you, you need to feel comfortable with the cycles of learning activity each week. You pick something of your interest, you do notes, you journal, and when you have a learning path, you share, and then in your online discussion forum, at the end of the week, you reflect on that, you write a blog, 
that if you make this cycle of learning um, keep going in, in your comment here, it will be very important for your study. Okay? And not only uh, what defines a sense of failure is how much you can handle this with different subjects. Okay? So not only this is very important. Now, I have to stop here today, it's almost four. Uh, first of all, I welcome you here in this class and I hope you enjoy today's time. I've spoken more than what I said today and I've just given you some time to give feedback. And I hope you do something on this particular Google environment by reading this week's material. And when you come back next week, also pay attention to my teacher's message coming up on Sunday, okay? The second week, all right? So, and um, just get a good start. All right, I think if you have classes, you need to go. Uh, actually, I told you I need to take uh, attendance. Um, let's forget about it today, all right? Let's forget about it. Let's, let's start next week, all right? So, welcome. I have not learned your name yet, but one thing I want you to do next week is prepare for yourself a two-minute introduction. I'll give you the microphone to stand here and introduce yourself to the whole class. Each one of you, two minutes. At most, okay? You can do it in one minute, but two minutes is the best. All right, you can tell who you are, why you take this course, what's the major, why you choose the majors, and expectations of this course. I want to get an A, how can I do that? Okay, and then have a good time on choose me. All right, so see you next week. This will be next Monday, all right? 2.30, right here, all right? Take your syllabus with you, and if I do not have enough copy today, uh, you ask your friend, and you go to the library and put the copy on your own, all right? Hope you enjoy today's class. Okay, enjoy the slacks. And make sure you pick up your mobile phone. I always have a lot of mobile phones on the floor, on the table, whatever it is. Okay, see you. Thank you. This is Dr. Watt speak, all right? So I'm going to stop my recording here. Hello, if you have a question, use the hotline, keep me in touch, I can answer your question, okay? So that's it for today's class, the first class of CISG 1.4, Samsung 1, Web Technology Online, on February 13, 2014. Until next week, stay tuned.